My name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're going to be looking at M Tracker 3D in Final Cut Pro 10. When using M Tracker 3D in Final Cut Pro 10, there are two steps. You'll be working first with an M Tracker 3D effect, and then you'll be working with M Tracker 3D in your titles browser. You'll see here that we have some drone footage loaded on our timeline that we took right outside of our studio just the other day. To track this footage, we need to go into our effects, locate M Tracker 3D, click and drag the M Tracker 3D effect onto our clip. You'll be presented with one button on the screen that says track. You're also presented with that same button in the inspector. They both do the same thing, it is simply one button to begin tracking your footage. Now that we're finished tracking our footage, you'll see that we have this option to copy our track. Step two is going to be working with titles, and we have to copy and paste our tracked information into those 3D elements. So let's go ahead and click our copy track button. Okay, and now that we have copied that tracking data, go over to MTracker 3D in your titles browser. You'll be presented with a lot of fun options, some 3D text, 2D text, drop zones, particles, pointers, USDZ models, and more that are available from motionvfx.com. Why don't we have some fun with this clip? Let's choose our robot. Bring it in just like any other title in Final Cut Pro 10, and make sure that you are matching the length of your clip by changing the duration. Now we need to paste our track data into our title. In the inspector, go to your titles and you'll see our published parameters. Simply paste track. Okay, and we can see now that our tracking data has successfully saved. Click okay. Next, go to your target icon and here you'll be able to pick a position on the screen to place our robot. Why don't we put him right here on the tracks? That looks really, really good. Next, we're going to want to deal with our 3D model's position, rotation, and scale. In the inspector, let's go ahead and adjust our rotation and our scale. I see now I'd actually like to relocate my robot, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a new position on the screen. Let's reset our parameters and readjust. That looks really good. We can see our robot is pre-animated with a walking feature. In order to make our robot look as though he's walking down the tracks, we can keyframe our 3D model's position. Again, go to your title and your published parameters. And you'll see here that we have our X, Y, and Z parameters. Let's go ahead and set keyframes on all of those. Now, let's scroll forward in our timeline just a bit. Here, I'm making adjustments to my position on my 3D model by setting these keyframes to make it appear as though he's walking down our track. That looks really good. I'll make a few more minor adjustments just to really dial it in. Okay, now why don't we adjust the light on our robot to better match our seat. In our title parameters, you see we have light rotation, Z position, color, and intensity available. Let's go ahead and rotate our light to better position ourselves with the sun. At the time of this recording, Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5 currently do not support shadows cast by USDZ 3D models. We do expect a fix for this in the future. Until then, we do have a workaround, which includes duplicating our clip, rotating our model, and playing with our opacity and blend modes to create a fake but realistic looking shadow. So what I've done for our shadow is I've duplicated our robot, adjusted the rotation in this compound clip, 
to place him on the ground. Then we take our compound clip, we change our blend mode to Silhouette Alpha, and we can bring our opacity down just a bit. I then added a Gaussian blur and very slightly added that blur just to match the current shadows being cast by the trees. I set keyframes for our position just so that our shadow can better stay underneath our robot. Since Final Cut 10 and Motion 5 do not support shadows by USDZ models, during the time of this recording, this is the best workaround available in Final Cut 10. Always keep in mind that there are certain limitations while working in Final Cut 10, and I'd strongly encourage you to check out Motion 5 if you would like access to more parameters. Now why don't we make one final compound clip and we can apply M-Film look to get an overall cohesive look.